Hello, welcome to this podcast, and uh, today, again, I'm with Holger Ratgeber, my friend and colleague. Holger, hi, how are you today? Hey, Nigel. Thanks. Fantastic to be with you. As it always is, indeed. Everyone says that to me, but... Um, oh, it's so inter- no, it's, it's just, you know, it's a pleasure talking Very to good. you. So. Um, so today, Holger, I think we've agreed we're going to be talking about, um, about coaching and... Uh, well, I called it executive coaching, but you're now going to shoot that down, aren't you? So I, I said, I said when we were okay. preparing, I said executive coaching. And what did you say to me about executive coaching? Okay, so the number of people who would call themselves executives versus the number of people who are today, in one or the other way, looking for um, a path to to increase their effectiveness in that sense, you know, with all what comes with it, you know, career and pleasure and fulfillment, etc. That's, that's just a factor of one to 10,000. So it is not about executives. And by the way, executives, um, a lot of them actually think they are already pretty perfect. So <laughs> but you and I don't go for it. Sadly, <laughs> not true. <laughs> they... <laughs> Um, so, no, uh, there's a world of there's a world of people out there struggling uh, in a good sense. No, no, I've got headache, I got problems. No, but struggling to truly um, live up to their potential. And for this, sometimes we need to have a second and a third brain that helps us find a path. So it's a pathfinding exercise. Coaching is a pathfinding exercise. Um, It often starts with intent or it, um, or sometimes even the intent is not totally clear. Meaning people are in a, in a, in a fog of many things that they should do, but they realize they can't do all of them. And so coaching is a pathfinding and it is definitely not limited to executives. And, and how much, that how, was my point, Nelzo. <laughs> I think I think I think that's great because you're absolutely right. Um, I mean, a lot of it is about really about people um, who, well, perhaps all people need additional coaching. Not everyone's prepared to recognise that perhaps they do, but they also have different needs, don't they? Um, so there's there's something around structure, I suppose. There, some people are comfortable with more structure, yeah. some, some less so. Um, what's your view on that? Okay, if you take 80, 80% of all coachings or um, a type of educational uh, offerings, they start with a, okay, let's do, a self, let's do an assessment, you know, either a self or others are actually inviting all sorts of people, you know, your boss, your peers, your customers, and, and all these things. And then they, and they have, typically they have a, a sort of a competency model, something that someone made up as the reference for, um, this is how, what you should have to become a leader or to live up to your potential or whatever. And... If you buy into that, you will get a list of things. Some of it is, you know, good stuff, okay stuff. And some of it is probably, oh, uh, not so uh, excellent. Uh, or what you call it? It's, it's the areas of improvement or just a, a display of the human nature of being imperfect. Human mm. nature is imperfect. So now all the energy goes into the, oh, not so, and they call it the blind spots. Mm. Now, meaning you are not aware, other people are aware of, you are not so perfect in that space. And, And that's the starting point of a lot of these coachings. And after years and years and years, I realized that that is not the right place to start. It's not the right place to start. Which is, um, a, which is, which is. I think I'm going to just underline this because I think this is really important for our viewers and, and listeners because this is one of the things we really want to talk about today is yeah. a, a, really a 
in, an innovative approach to to coaching um, that does to some extent change um, and is perhaps largely new in its thinking and that blind spot thing because we all have them but that's a huge relief to all of us isn't it really I mean what Holger's saying here is we don't necessarily if we're going to improve we don't have to sit there with that kind of introspection and and, and self-flagellation of having to spend hours <laughs> talking to somebody about how crap we are in certain areas, which I think might be a relief to quite a lot of the people that we're, that's, uh, that's listening or viewing this. All right, exactly. So uh, you're getting, we're moving in the right direction. So in in any conversation I'm having is that most people, the vast majority of people, the vast majority uh, of people, have things in their bright spot, meaning they are totally aware. They know enough to deal with. Um, so there's no point of doing all these kind of assessments and, and stuff. Um, you can go right into these bright spots and the bright spot is what I would call um, what's in the bright spot In the bright spot is probably initially a, a too many of the things that you know that um, are challenges out there for you things you know I'm not making fast enough progress but they are essential they're important um, and in that bright spot, you always have enough things that you know are getting in the way for you to truly commit to those leadership challenges on the outside or are in the way of other peoples to commit to join you in this, to engage in the sense in solving a not trivial leadership challenges, challenge on the outside. So um, that's where actually the, um, the initial energy should be focused around two things in my mind. What's out there that's for me to deal with and what's inside me, the, the kind of the, 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 the work inside that I need to do to make sure that I'm not in the way, in the sense, for that one, the thing on the outside, to, to blow, you know, to really drive. Um, and those are the essence. That's the essence but of is the, the bright Sorry spot. to interrupt you. Is the bright spot, is the, bright spot the um, thing that, that one, the person, is really good at, or is the bright spot the the thing that's out there that they Ooh, really want Nigel, to Nigel, Nigel. <laughs> Now you get us into a, t whoa, in a big field there where, in my observation, there's a huge, it's not a confusion people would know that they have, but it's a huge confusion. The, which is about being good at doing and love doing. Um, and there's a big, I mean, there's an overlap for sure. I mean, if you're good at doing, doing it often, you get the rewards, you get the rec, you get this into the cycle of, Hey, I'm doing this and other people are pleased. Other people give me even some money for it, doing it, you know, um, I'm, I'm getting rewarded for it. So you do more of it and there's a fair chance that, um, actually you're getting better. But it started off with something that you love to do anyway. So this is where it's growing. But there's a huge, huge part that is not the same, meaning I'm good at something, but I don't really love doing it. Mm. Which, which most of and us have, a, don't we, big, as parts of our roles? And, and big field, a big field. See, um, I mean, physics talks about, defines work as energy applied to an object. Mm. But meaning the energy leaves your body 
and is applied to an object. Mm. Now, where's the energy? It's in the object, not in you anymore. Mm. Meaning, even if you're really good at something, you are consuming energy. You get some of it back if you're good at it, because the rewards, I mean, in the broadest sense, in the broadest sense, meaning it's not just monetary, it's about um, feeling valued, it's about uh, making a customer happy, it's about um, career opportunities that open up for you. Um, but <clears throat> the fundamental element is here that you consume or you transfer your energy within onto an object, a challenge, and suddenly the, the challenge is moving, but the energy has left your body. Mm. So you are tired. In good cases, the reward is giving you some form of recharge, mm -hmm. but it's depending on it. Think about you're doing good. You're actually good at something and you give and you do and you do. You realize if the environment, meaning what is not in your control, isn't giving you the necessary reward. Couldn't be custom. Could be a customer who who forgot about the virtue of saying thank you, <laughs> or your boss who doesn't give you the next raise, although you gave him five, six, seven new contracts worth millions. I don't know. Then you suddenly realize I have a motivation problem here. Mm. And how does that contrast Is then with the love, the the love piece? The love doing is very different. The love doing is you spend more time on it than you should probably should because you love doing it. Mm. <laughs> you feel like, um, I mean, there's this, I, I, this guy, you know, the flow thing, which I can't even print and his name is impossible. So I, I don't even try to remember. But it's this element of flow, it's this element of being in the right place, being in the right place with what you do and feeling good about it. And the point is you can go on and on and on and you're not feeling like you're tired. Very good, yeah. So, so, so in, in summary, it's kind of the, um, the being good at something you can be good at it and you can but but it's still draining more energy because you're putting out more energy than you're maybe getting back whereas the love exactly. is kind of a virtuous circle where you are continually getting back the energy that you're putting out probably sometimes getting more yeah. energy back than you're putting in which uh, sometimes even more yeah. i mean imagine in that zone of love doing and being good at actually that is where you probably get more energy out of it than you're consuming so how does this because come back then? So, so sorry, sorry to, to interrupt you and pull you back onto the, the coaching piece. So <laughs> thinking about getting those that bright spot thing where, you, where you're getting somebody to think and, uh, and focus on the stuff they love. I mean, we've still got to do the stuff we're good at and sometimes do the stuff that maybe we don't like. It's yeah. maybe part of a job. But how do you then, from a coaching point of view, turn that principle into somebody's improvement? Well, the first one is actually that um, because for whatever reason, it is a strange idea, meaning people get it instantly, but they haven't thought about it. Mm. So if what, what you would do is, of course, present a structure of love doing. And there's some, I mean, it's not, it's individual, but there is some uh, patterns around out there where you say these act type of activities belong to a certain pattern, for example, the creative pattern or the bossy pattern, meaning you love to be in charge of things. And that's what you do. You love autonomy. You love to be in charge or, you know, the <clears throat> oh, whatever, the mentoring pattern where you love to give your relationships and your knowledge to other people so that you can help them grow. And you love to be with other people. For other people, this is a loathing exercise, meaning they would love to have as minimal of other people in their life to deal with. But so it's very individual. 
But the first part is, of course, to even understand what is the energy giving activity that um, I might use to to take my to to move my external challenge, meaning the leadership challenge on the outside, um, forward. Um, that is already a good a good uh, conversation to have. Um, so, okay, your turn. I made my point. I don't no, know no, what indeed, to say. Yeah. Else. So, I think what you're, you, if I've understood you correctly, what you're saying is, is that we can, we can take, if we're thinking about from a coaching point of view, we can take those bright spots and enable the person to focus better on those bright spots. Would you say, in in a sense? Then we go back to the old-fashioned way of looking at it, which is the blind spot, that if you get someone to yeah. focus more on their bright spots, their blind spots, to some extent, look after themselves. Would you say that? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Um, I mean, the blind spots might still come at you, but you don't know. I mean, let's wait for the, blind, for the spots on the blind to become real, meaning uh, you start to realize in working uh, that there is something that you didn't have on the radar. Mm. And indeed, there are elements that, uh, I mean, I'm not advocating just, you know, go with your passion, go with your love and ignore the rest. I mean, that is naive stuff. Mm. Yeah, yeah, sure. There are still. But what I'm saying, there's enough in the conscious window where people are aware of things that get in the way for them to engage or for others to engage on their leadership challenge. Yeah, clearly. And, and you have to address them. Um, but it's as a starting point, let's start with the love because the, um, See, what I'm realizing is a lot of people are at the max of what they think they can cope with, mm. both from volume of work, or troubles here, troubles there. And they literally have not a single button left on their shirt. Um, now, if you move into spaces of love, of the love doing, Actually, you will discover that there is a lot of space you have because there's a lot of stuff you do that doesn't need to be done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's really that's a that's a really profound point. Um, so so moving slightly further on, um, what the listener and viewer might not know at the moment is is that Holger has developed a particular coaching methodology. Um, which is called the Holben Sprint. Um, can you talk oh, us yeah. through what the sprint is about, uh, Holger? Because I, just I, I no, know it's a, it's a one. big subject area, but maybe you can you can. It's a big subject area. It's a big subject area. But first of all, where does this weird Holben come from? It has two elements. It has Holger, and there is a second part which has Ben, which is my son Benjamin, and so. I think you called it the 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 the, the father son love project, and it is. Um, but it's not just that, meaning not just loving to do work with my son, but it is about that. I came to realize that I'm actually pretty resourceful when it comes to understanding people's context and directing them and and supporting them in finding a path on their outside challenge, meaning on the stuff that, that needs to get done. Could it be an important project, an important initiative, an important contract or whatever? Yet when it comes to self-development, Nigel, meaning the doing the work on yourself, uh, I would say my water is less deep than I wish. <laughs> which <laughs> which <laughs> which opened up actually the space for me working with, with Benjamin, um, who is, I mean, a very, very deep on, on self-development and understanding some of your immune system reactions, you know, procrastination, self-sabotage, uh, 
um, and all these things and how to overcome them with building better habits and all these things. It's, it's all about habits and, and, and we have all of them. Um, sometimes we wish we had better ones. So, and he's just very resourceful from taking in a habit and building a good habit and making it grow and grow and grow. That's, that's his expertise. And so here comes the whole boom program where we take out of the, you know, the many things people could do some work on to be more effective as a leader and select just two. One on the outside that provides the real life challenges, but also the reward and the, the, out, the effectiveness and one on the inside that is your, the work on yourself. And if you make them twins, they are going into, in, in our experience, they are forming a virtuous loop of development. It's not just, you know, the working on myself to improve eventually, but it's improving in the moment of doing something that is very impactful. So it's this magic combination that I believe is um, is a game changer for coaching. Mm. Very good. And in terms of just to give the um, our listeners, viewers, some structure around that, because um, there's some, also some interesting elements of how it integrates into the person's work. Can you just give us a flavor um, of of how the structure of that particular program works? And again, yeah. why that's maybe different to other forms of, of, of conventional coaching, executive or otherwise. Yeah. yeah. Well, <clears throat> I mean, you, you heard it. The, the first step, the first step is, in a sense, a radical focus. You know, we got so many things to be working on on the outside and so many things that we believe we could improve on the bright spot, meaning we are totally aware, we should do this, we should do that, we should stop doing this, we should stop doing that. Um, but without a radical focus, um, this is going nowhere. So that's where it starts, right? It starts with radical focus on one thing on the outside. Doesn't mean the other aren't important, it's just for the process of growth you pick one and what we would typically advise here is pick one where progress needs to be immediate, where it's not something out there in five years or three years. Pick something that you want to make a visible, unambiguous progress in 16 weeks. We call it the sprint because we call it a 16-week program. Mm. So it is... Maybe not the biggest thing, but it's the one thing you know I can do something if I focus on it and it will be visible, unambiguous progress on the outside. And this would be something in the person's job, yeah? So, so something. Absolutely. Yeah. So, this is not a, a case study. This is not working through a Harvard Business Review case, you know? No, this is and something in front of you that you can say, I'll, I'll nail it, or I'll kind of double dabble through it. Right? So, bam, something in your real life. So it's going which to actually, actually sorry to interrupt nice. you, it's going to actually benefit. So I'm, I'm thinking again, if somebody's, somebody's a stakeholder who might be listening or, or watching this, it, it's, it, you know, so it, it is something which is then going to benefit the business, isn't it? Because, I mean, sometimes these things have a, a, a bit more ephemeral, aren't they, where you kind of go, oh, yeah, well, we're going to improve the person by this coaching. This is actually going to give them a yeah. specific project which they're going to get a lot better at, which is yeah. going to have a really strong positive benefit to the business as well. Yeah, in, in the best cases I've seen, the program pays multiples of its cost, right? Because there's a, there's a clear business impact. It's not like, as you said, we are investing in the person, wonderful, but uh, the returns are, well, eventually. Mm. There is some return. And maybe after the person's uh, moved on somewhere else. 
<laughs> yeah, but still, it's without a choice. If someone said, you know, what if I put the money into people and they move on? And the other guy says, what if you don't put money into them and they stay? What's worse? <laughs> I, I mean, that is a classic, okay? Mm. But the point is, um, uh, this is actually... Um, the design is to deliver value to the organization within 16 weeks. It will deliver value to the person, no doubt, mm. but it's a match in the best cases. And, but, but move on. So we got that defined. It's a, it's a, it's a high stakes project, but something you can clearly see how to move the dial, not clear, not how, but the need for it, the, the importance of it is very clearly established. But that also means that for the program, the 16 weeks, you're actually not spending incremental time on it. You're just spending probably a little bit more time on it than you would normally anyway. Mm. But it's not like other programs where you spend the every extra hour is an extra hour spent. Mm. In this program, you're spending an hour on something you would probably spend anyway an hour on it. But you're doing it more effectively. So this is, in a way, the, is very, very effective for busy people, isn't it? So people who have already oh, yeah. got thinking that they haven't got enough time it, for everything. Have I got time to have coaching as well? A lot of people would say, mm, I can't change my tires now. You know, they are run down, but I can't. I don't have time to change my tire. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so they 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 run as long as the tire holds, and one day. Pff, yeah. And then, okay, now let's go to the doctor. Yeah. Um, but the... Um, nice the, metaphor, that, by the way, uh, Holger. <laughs> I, I'm not so sure about it, but it's okay. You know, it's, it's, it makes the point. Mm. The, um, but don't forget the second dimension. And this is where actually I think it is. Um, you get into this uh, virtuous loop of growth and impact. A lot of programs offer growth, meaning I learn. Some programs are less so on the coaching side, but more the consultant stuff. You know, I helped you to, to, to uh, deliver your most important project with the project management, blah, blah, blah. But this combination of growth and impact is pretty cool. So, but you asked how that works. Um, uh, this is in the... Uh, when you have established this very clear focus on the outside, on the we call it the X challenge, um, then you can clearly go into the love zone, meaning what is actually that you can bring to this challenge that will not uh, tire you. That's something that's natural, that feels like an, a deeply embedded life interest, someone called it one day. Um, but the, you need to go beyond that. You can't just work with what you love to do. That's not realistic. So we have to go into understanding what are you doing and not doing that's getting in the way for you to achieve that X challenge. Mm. And, um, and again, on the bright spot, people come up with a lot of things. They are totally aware. Like, you know, I'm trying to be, I try to have control over things. I'm not comfortable with, you know, things being in the flow or um, I, I, I don't do engage enough other stakeholders. I'm not comfortable getting into their calendar and saying, hey, I need to talk to you. Mm. I'd rather, you know, avoid that. Mm. Because I don't know what to do in this conversation. Oh, whatever that is, there could be a long list, but people are totally aware and that's enough to work with to get a, lev a lever of improvement, of growth. So once you have that established, um, Benjamin has found uh, a very nice way to break those, um, to almost bust this self-generated barriers for engaging self and others. Mm. And without going into any detail, you know, but yeah, yeah, no, well, the, the, the some, to some good, extent, we can maybe cover some of this in a later one as well, uh, possibly, Holger. So, uh, yeah, uh, why not? Ask Benny how to do it. You know, yeah. one day you can have my son on the podcast yeah, and he absolutely. talks about it. 
Uh, he, he's a bit better looking um, than you as well, I seem to recall. Oh, I'm so pretty sure. Um, um, that was not nice, Nigel. But anyway, <laughs> um, it might so him, radical man. focus, radical focus. Then it's about building a support system. This is about change. Change without a support system is very often fa- you got some fading commitment, meaning. Um, and so it's about the radical focus, then building yourself a support system with understanding how you how you will how will you uh, notice that you are making progress meaning what are your indicators of progress then who in your environment do you want and need to have their full support as as accountability partner as someone who challenges you gives you feedback blah 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 make that very transparent make that very clear have a contract with them about what they need to do. Very good. And how Excellent. they can. So as a point to finish on, because we're almost uh, at the end of our time, sadly, because that's gone quickly, hasn't it? Um, but uh, And uh, we're still only half through the program, but that doesn't make a difference. Now, no, you we'll, know, have keep, you want... we'll have to keep people guessing a little bit. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, I, think, I think you've given them a really good flavor of that. And, uh, uh, and by the way, um, uh, completely open sales pitch here to anyone listening or watching but if you do want more information on this and i would strongly recommend that you do then by all means get in touch with either of us and we can talk you through um, a lot more of the detail about what holger's been talking about and um, last question really if you can be fairly succinct please uh, holger I, I bright spots okay how do you identify? So those people that are thinking about this, thinking, well, what is my bright spot? What's the best? I mean, obviously, we can talk about the things we love to do, et cetera. But just thinking about in the context of real life working roles, um, how do you, you know, how do you spot what that bright spot is and, 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 and figure out if you were having a coach, if Holger was going to be the, the listener's coach, what, what, would, what would they what would they tell him? What would what would you ask them to figure out what that bright spot is? Mm. Well, by definition, a bright spot is something that you are totally aware, and basically everyone around you would agree to what you say. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's good. a bright that's, spot. That's no. That's really that's 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 beneficial in itself. Yeah. yeah. So I'm good at doing this. Um, I struggle with that. Um, I, I love doing these things, etc. And just make a list and ask people, are you aware of that? And if they say it, totally, thanks for making the effort of getting yourself straight. I mean, start with, start with what you're conscious about. And actually, there's some... To get back to our... You asked me to be succinct, but to get back to our initial conversation... In my experience, there's so much uh, work to do in the bright spot that you don't need 360s and all these things that create attention and to divert your attention from what you already know would advance you if you did that or stopped doing it or did it in a different way. That's all. That's great. No, that's a that's a very good uh, good point um, to finish on. And uh, perhaps another time we, we we haven't had time today, but we can talk about the um, the game, the business game that you've developed, because that touches on this stuff as well, doesn't it? And also oh, we we, we yeah, haven't yeah, talked we about, talk about we haven't talked about appreciation and recognition, which I'd intended to, but we've had so many other good things to talk about. But we can do about that in another session. But Holger, thank you very much. Um, fascinating to talk to you as ever. Um, for those who haven't seen a previous podcast, which I did with Holger on um, on change management, um, Holger is a best-selling uh, author, uh, thought leader, if you like, on leadership, and um, really delighted to work with him on some of these projects and really delighted to have the podcast today. So thank you so much for your time. Um, lovely to be able to look into your office there as well. And you can see one of Holger's uh, German um, 
if you're if you're watching this, you can see his 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 German version of one of his books there with the penguins. Um, I'm not going to try and pronounce that in German because it would sound awful if I try and say it. But it's no, it's, it's our are, iceberg is melting. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, a lot of people will know that what that one's about. But anyway, Holger, thanks again, and uh, we'll log off thanks, there. Michael. But uh, yeah. thank you, and um, we're going to do another one, aren't we? So um, uh, hope the. Oh, I can't one. believe I'm looking at the watch. I can't believe uh, how time passed. <laughs> how good little time goes. Always the same. It's always the same with you. I mean, <laughs> time is just running. Oh, um, good. Yeah, well, feels, hopefully that's because we're loving what we're doing. But there's like a great no, space to spot. Great, no, just just get the words like together. A magical. great place to stop. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Speak soon. All Take right, care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for viewing and or listening to this Remtech Talent Management podcast. Our guest was international best-selling author Holger Ratgeber, interviewed by myself, Nigel Job. If you'd like to discuss further, please contact us via our LinkedIn accounts. Holger's and John Cotter's books, Our Iceberg is Melting, and That's Not How We Do It Here, can be found on Amazon and at all good booksellers. I hope you enjoy them. I certainly did. Have a great day.